Hello, welcome back to Dugout Steps Baseball. It is July 16th, 1980. We have the Phillies uh, at uh, 51 and 31 facing the Astros 49 and 36. Um, we have uh, Bob Walk with a control 7 facing Ken Force with uh, control 2, which is his normal control. I'll bring the uh, score sheet over here so it'll be more visible while we're uh, recording. And uh, start out the proceedings. I'll be using my cards at the same time. So if it seems I'm fluttering around, it's because I'm sh moving cards around and stuff. Uh, I prefer to use both when I do this. Uh, and uh, that'll bring up Lonnie Smith against Ken Forsh. Um, the base rate is around 65, uh, maybe plus or minus uh, on that based on the uh, pitch count at the time of the roll. So let's get this going and uh, see how the uh, Phillies and Astros head out. Both are in first uh, place of their prospective leagues and should be a wild game. A lot of the big names are out of the lineups, uh, but still could be a... Uh, a very very interesting game all right uh, Lonnie Smith allowed himself to get behind 1-0 so the pitcher has a slight advantage moving the uh, rate up to 66 he rolls 43 that would be a probable way out 23 is ground ball at the center field or the middle infield and the 3 to 23 makes it ground ball to second base it's a range, little bit of a range for him to get to, um, but with nobody on base, that's not going to be a problem. Uh, and uh, there is no uh, range play called for, so that'll be an easy out, uh, four to three. And Lonnie Smith uh, goes down four to three. And I know I miss rolls sometimes, and I'm probably missing rolling. Uh, for his speed because he's a green rated speed but I'm going to roll on right now as I'm recording and I'll verify that another day game plays well even if you're forgetful like me you can forget some of the rules and it'll still be very realistic um, green rated uh, runners like Lonnie Smith you see as a 9 uh, can cause extra errors and uh, run out some extra uh, uh, plays just due to their speed alone um, but I want to verify all that before I give some some bad bad scoop and um, so we'll just play through it that brings up Pete Rose I'll click the on base because we will now be using the men on base versus right uh, for Pete Rose which is minus six um, the rate right now will be 69 and um, could be plus or minus based on the count again Pete Rose is uh, a 40 hit and run guy, so if we get a yellow count up here, which would be a good hit and run count, I'm going to hit and run. And we have a red, so no, he, he gets behind in the count. And you see that the uh, 71 reflects this, as the pitcher has the advantage over him. And... Um, He rolls a uh, 100, which will be a hit to an out based on the range for the uh, Astrodome. And uh, that will be to the right field based on Pete Rose's spray chart. So we'll go up here, and because I have everything automated in this, we'll just click the hit the out. And it is pretty close to the field or 14. As you familiar dugout steps noted, uh, 10 is about where the 10 or 11 is right where the fielder is and everything kind of splays out based on that so the closer you get the 1 or 20 the farther away uh, from the fielder gets to uh, uh, 20 being the farthest away towards the outfield and uh, 1 being the farthest away towards the infield uh, that was a single that went to right field and uh, you will see the right fielder has a rate of 7 and uh, the range is 2 so he, he could be out on a uh, roll of 15 or less despite the uh, the probable hit because there's a very good outfielder there and it is close to the fielder. So let's see what the result is. And up here we see that is indeed a fly out the right field. 
Also on this roll, we see the steal attempt zero up here. If Lonnie Smith were uh, his steal range underneath that question mark was within that number up here, that in this case is zero, so very few will ever do that. Um, he would attempt to steal before I would do the next roll. But as this happened, um, we have a uh, fly out the right field and we'll go to the next batter. Oh, if you were on base at that, I'm thinking he ran it out already uh, in a slight daze. Rainy Saturday afternoon here in PA and I ate a big breakfast, so here we go. See if I can stay awake. Getting older sucks. All right, that'll bring up Bakement Bride. See that we would have never done a hit and run for some reason. Talking about the uh, speed and running out plays, I got the impression that uh, Ronnie Smith was on base, so I completely blew that last uh, out bat out my ass. And so we'll get back on track here. Um, I'm not afraid to make mistakes. Um, there is nobody on base. We have two outs. And uh, Bake McBride is up. His magic number will be 66. Again, based on the pitch count. Um, he gets way behind. He's buried 0-2. Um, pitcher bears down on him. And he rolls an 8 to begin with, which is a probable 8 out to hit. And uh, 62 puts that as a fly ball to left field. So we got seven fly balls. We type in an F. And uh, the left fielder is five, and the range is two. Again, very close to the fielder. So he will not get a hit on this. As you see, there's range of zero or less. So that will be a fly ball to left field. And the fields go down uh, um, easily. It brings up the uh, Astros. And um, Bob Walk's got some decent control today, really good control compared to the fact that he's normally walk prone with a plus one control. And he'll be facing Rafael Landestoy. Uh, the magic number here is 78. And um, he rolls a 60. Nobody's on base. Their pass bowl is a uh, no factor. Uh, the hustle up here does mean that uh, he can attempt to run this play out. Uh, if it is a ground ball, so we will roll against his speed. Um, so, probable out, uh, no strikeout or walk, and the 66 is a fly ball to center field, so the hustle won't even come into play. And that ball with the 12 is al almost directly at the fielder. That brings up Terry Poole. Okay, Terry Poole. Nobody on base. Uh, his number is 67 or thereabouts. And he rolled a 20, but with the control 7, that uh, 3 is within that 7, so he will not walk. And uh, as you see, that's where the uh, control comes into play. And that'll be a fly ball to right field. The 18's tight, so I'll check for fly ball to home run, but even though I know it's not within the fielder's range, field's range of 20, the Astrodome kind of swallows home runs, so you really need a high uh, D20 to get that, that chance. So, here we have an easy fly ball out the right field, and down goes pull. Alright, I'm gonna pause out. Alright, sorry about that. Now it brings up Danny Heap. Batting left against Walk. And uh, he will need a 67 or so. And he holds. Oh, we got a little combination going here, but a hit overrides a strikeout. So he will not strike out. Um, should his K run be uh, K rating be a plus of any form, and there's no other pitch to contact or anything showing that one, if it's in that range there, would be an automatic strikeout. But uh, hits override strikeouts anyway, and he's a minus eight. That's way out of range. That would only come into play if it's within the uh, pitcher's K rate. 
and being as it's an 83, that is a single to center field. And Heap is the first uh, base runner of the day in this game. Which will bring up Jose Cruz. And with two outs, we won't attempt to hit and run. And he's batting left against Walk. And uh, you see the numbers start dropping significantly because uh, Heap is uh, better with, I mean, Cruz is better with men on base. Um, so, uh, oh, well you see that number droops significantly because the uh, pitcher got behind on the count two to one, and um, it went down to 57. So Jose Cruz rolls yet another, us another single, and this is the 43. Um, with two out, uh, we add eight to the dice roll. That's a single to seven. We go to the uh, bat at ball and play chart and we see that a runner on first would subtract five but down here we see that uh, a two outs plus uh, you add eight to the runner speed so that will be a net of plus three to the runner speed uh, plus three to the runner speed uh, so let's see if we get a uh, can advance uh, heap who was a slow runner to third base uh, that was a single to seven uh, we'll go hit one and heap speed would now be six and the fielder is four the fielder's reaction is three so he got a good reaction so we got six minus one um, makes it five we add that to the range of nine makes it uh, 14 and we subtract to four which makes it 10 so we got a 50 50 chance of him making it the third and with a slow runner we're going to say no we will not advance and not even attempt the roll so he will just move to second speed has its advantages but not in that case ball placement range and uh and you know batter uh, runner speed came into play to keep that from getting to be a uh, significant storing chance brings up cesar Cedeno, the aging veteran um, he is batting 245 already, has two home runs, and um, his number is going to be around 67 or so. Uh, he rolls a 95, which is a hit to out range. We also have an error showing, so if this stays a hit, it will not be an error check. Um, 43 for Cedeno is a single to seven so we will have to check that four is pretty far away from the uh, fielder and you'll see that reflected in the range coming up in this check so we uh, we try a hit to out and that would be a single to seven and uh, third base uh, actually it was on the ground enough for the third base to try it and Michael Schmidt is not the lineup and you see that reflected in Vukovic's rate of three there so uh, he would have a lot less chance to get this single if uh, Schmidt were playing but uh, as Vukovic is there he's going to be out on a roll of three or less and uh, we, as you see we roll an 18 and it shows up here as a hit so there's no error check and um, we can get to see whether Heap can do anything with this or not. Again, we hit the ball to left field. And uh, so there's a runner on second that we're going to try to get home. And that's where I direct a flow, throw to. So Heap will now have a full plus eight going to his speed. Um, and we will attempt to get him home. We'll see whether he wants to try it or not. Uh, seven, hit, one. And uh, his speed will now be uh, 11 because of the uh, two outs. And you see fielder four, range nine. Um, uh, speed of 11, base speed of 11, and the fielder's reaction again is a three. So it moves the 11 down to 10. We add the nine, makes it 19. Subtract the four, which is 15. So we have a one in 15 chance. I have about a 75% chance of going home. And I think that's worth it. I usually try anything around 15 or more. So we will click yes and see if Heap can make it home. I will, however, hold uh, uh, Cruz going the second because if I chose to uh, redirect a throw to second base, that would be with the minus five advantage and uh, that would be very tight. So the, 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 the coach will hold him at first base. Or gone into second base. I mean, he will not go to third. 
So let's see if Heap can go home. And you see we rolled a five, so that's not even close. He's safe at home on a single, and the other base runners just advance one base. So Walk's already finding himself in a little trouble. He's giving off three straight hits. Now has a run across the plate. And Art Howe is coming up the plate. So we have for hell two out uh, runners from first and second, and um, our hell is he's um, slightly worse against with men on base, and he's not very good against not as good against righties. So this should be a little bit in Walk's favor. Uh, Walk on the other hand against righties is is better against righties and uh, he's also seems to bear down a little the, with men on scoring position on men on base but uh, yeah hasn't showed so far today uh, let's roll the dice and see if you see the number should be around 73 but it could get worse so uh, I'd uh, actually walk buried him in the count 0 and 2 which I had three to the uh, number and it's now a 79 and you see we roll a 25 there Howe's a minus 11 K rate, so two doesn't come into effect, so it's probably out. Fly ball to center field, almost directly to the center fielder, but we do have an E showing. So we need to roll for a uh, an out to the uh, outfield. Uh, you, you, in dugout steps, you have a E and an XC. The uh, XC, if you get the XC, the error would only apply if the ball... Um, hits the ground so if you get a uh, single or a ground ball uh, the likes of that you, you would get an error check on that um, E checks are on all outs but not on hits and um, so we got a fly ball to uh, center field and because that's an E that's an outfield check 8 and there's no error on the play. So we have an F8 and the walk gets out of it giving up only one run. But uh, in a game like this that could always be enough. You just never know. Now will bring up Keith Moreland in the second. He's batting 254. Only has 63 at bats so far. And um, He rolls a 16 against 71, which is probably out, more than likely out. And you see 11, it barely out of forces range, so that'll be a ground ball to third base. And there's nothing else showing to check on, so Moreland will indeed go down 5-3. Uh, Gary Maddox will come up. And uh, he, he also rolls a, a probable out, 36 as well, under 77. 51 on... Uh, Porsche's chart is a ground ball to first base, and it's almost directly to first baseman, so that's an unassisted play at first. Brings up Manny Trio. Phillies are going down 1 2 3 here. Uh, Manny Trio. Uh, he will also roll mo most like a probable out. We see the slow roller here. If it is a ground ball to either the, uh, the base. Uh, 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 covers uh, infielders uh, d excluding the pitcher and the catcher then uh, uh, he has a chance to beat them out with their speed um, so we have uh, a 48 which goes to center field ground ball which is the, to the shortstop as you see it's a one very far ranging play for a shortstop um, but that does not matter as there's no hit to out or anything called for so he will definitely be out unless he can run it out that will be a six to three 
Um, uh, Big McBride speed is, or not Big McBride, Manny Trio speed is uh, three. So this will be a uh, actually a three. He's got to beat a four. The only way he can get that to balloon call or anything like that. We'll roll it in case, but anything less than the anything more than a one would don't even look up. And he is out six three. Phillies go down quietly again, and uh, the Astros come back up to the plate with uh, Alan Ashby, Ashby up. Ashby will roll probably an L. Three is uh, he's a minus six. We won't even check that. Forty-four is a ground ball to the first baseman. And a four is pretty far away from the first baseman. As you see, it shows up here that uh, the first baseman indeed shovels it. The pitcher for the L, and there's a three-one. Brings up Craig Reynolds. Uh, Craig Reynolds uh, will check the hit batter. No hit batsman. Uh, gets a single, 78 to right field, nothing else to check for, and the uh, Houston hit machine continues. It brings up Ken Forsh, he's a sacrifice bunt of 67, and uh, he's going to call the bunt, which adds 15 to it, um, 70, 82, try to sacrifice bunt on him, needs an 82. Oh, 96, that's a failed sacrifice bunt, but and he fails to hit bat check, so failed sacrifice bunt, we go look up uh, 10 on the failed sacrifice, and that is uh, at the pitcher, and we see we look at a double play if it's uh, if it's fielder's choice, it's an A or B, so we go back to Porsche, and we look at his fielder's choice, and his uh, grounded in double play is B, um, so it it would be a one six four double play if um, his uh, grounded in double play is within the range. So the only way for them to turn his double play is if we roll within the shortstop's uh, range, which is three. So on a die of one to three, they can get the double play. Otherwise, it's just going to be a uh, fielder's choice six four. I mean one six. And we roll one, close but no cigar. So he gets on with a fielder's choice six four. I mean uh, one six. Keep making that mistake, and that uh, gives him two outs and uh, land a story on. All right. Landestoy, he has a chance for a walk, but the, again, the control negates that, but he does get the hit. Kind of wishes he would get a, a walk, I'm sure. You see that 21 is within the triple range to right field. We do check for a uh, triple to home run, but it's non-existent. And um, so um, Landestoy triples and drives in another run. So walks uh, struggling a little bit here today. Oh, he's got the fills down to nothing. And uh, brings up Terry Poole. All right, Terry Poole. He hit gets in a, gives up another hit uh, and another low number on that hit. So this could hurt also. Uh, Poole to 91. Well, outside to hit the out range, so it's a straight up hit. 26 is yet another uh, triple. I see a card error here. Um, that 25 is dupe, so that would be a double, not a triple. 26 will be a triple to center field. We try to buy uh, the uh, triple to uh, home run. Do not get it. So Terry Poole draws another uh, triple, and we have back-to-back -back triples and back-to-back -back scores. And, and Walk starting to really struggle out there. We got three runs and six hits, and we're still in the second inning. So uh, see if he can kind of knuckle down and save the fill some uh, bullpen action uh, brings up Danny Heap 
any heat gets a probable out. The six is within out the hit range. Ten doesn't mean anything. Fifty-three will be a fly ball to left field, and it's semi close to the fielder. So we'll go seven F and uh, fielder's four. So uh, it'll be a hit on a roll of three or less. And we rolled a one, of course we did. So we will go to the uh, ball and play left chart and uh, look on the uh, fly ball to left field uh, six. And we see over here that uh, the out the hit is a single, blue being single green being double and the runners only move one base but uh, damage is done the runners only needed to move one base and uh, he gets a timely uh, range play single and drives in yet another run so normally I don't let pitchers get more than five or six runs before I pull them especially this early in the game I give him one more chance to get out of this inning and um, that would be against Jose Cruz and um, definitely not a quality start for walk. Okay, Cruz. He rolls yet another hit or a walk. Again, the control swallows the walk, but the hit is in place, and that is going to be a double unless it flies over the wall, and it does not. So that will be a double, and we have the ability to try to advance heap. Remembering that there is two outs again, so... Uh, we have uh, plus eight, and we'll go to ball and play chart center field, and we will look at the double. And uh, there we see that on first base, there's no modification. So heap speed plus eight and it will be 11, and we'll try to see whether we want to advance him or not. Eight, hit, double, base runner speed 11. Uh, fielder 6, his reaction was normal, so we don't add or subtract anything, so we still have 11. Add that to the range 15, you see how much the range is affected now by the double and the uh, 16. So we add that to the 11, which makes it 26. We subtract 6, and that means a 20. So yes, we definitely try to advance him, and you see that he is safe. Um, but, as it is 1 under, we go to the uh, main chart and uh, if one is less we see that there's a close play um, the uh, runner needs to avoid the tag so we're going to take the runner speed uh, where the out would take place which would be the runner going home which is heap and his speed is three we add ten to that and roll a d20 and see if uh, he can be safe from the avoided tag or not. So we're looking for a 13 or less for him to uh, be safe. And we have a 2. So yes, he indeed scores. And that is another run in. And um, Walk is just completely struggling now with 5 five hits. Uh, five, 8 hits, 5 runs. Um, and uh, 3 extra base hits this inning alone. Brings up Cesar Cedena, and uh, I'm going to bear with him just one more because Cedena is a righty, and uh, just try to try to get through this inning. Um, but dugout steps, five or more runs, he becomes ineffective. So we got to do this with an increased penalty now, which makes you think even more about doing it. We'll take that chance. Last batter, bullpen's warming up and uh, roll and uh, I'm going to pay for that and not only am I going to pay for that uh, actually it won't be that horrible uh, we see that the, we rolled a 9 uh, so the control does not cover that we have a 20 and Cesar Cedeno walks on a 19 or 20 so he will walk and uh, well, could very well save uh, walk a, uh, a run and I think we've just seen about enough for him and um, I think it's too early in the game to be sacrificing Manny Trio, so I'm not going to do a double switch. I'll uh, bite it and let my reliever take an at bat. And uh, we'll go uh, to my pitching status and see who's going to come in. That would be uh, second inning. And. Uh, 
looks like Warren Brewster. I uh, yeah, set up a chart based on uh, inning uh, uh, games, games pitched in relief based on how many games are available for, and grab the uh, inning appearance chart out of Retro Sheet to make a uh, bullpen selection a little bit easier based on realism. When did they, how often did they pitch, when did they come in, etc. Um, so if you're wondering what that is, that that was that. Uh, let's go pull out Warren Brewster here. And um, he will come in in the ninth position because I do not want to give up a fielder yet. And we will warm him up. And he rolls a control three. So at least we got some control going on here. Let me mess with my cards real quick. So bear with me as I, I do that. I'm going to get Bob Walk out of there. Warren Brewster in. And get a control three on him. Warren Brewster. Now, not only does Warren Brewster have men on base, but he has inherited runners and the dugout steps that comes into play. And you see what Warren Brewster's numbers that he's pretty consistent with you know, bases empty and men on base, but when he's brought in with inherited runners, his performance dropped considerably. So that will be a penalty that uh, could hurt. Um, and let's do that change in uh, ball stat too, shall we? New pitcher, Brewster, ninth. And he's 1-0 uh, with a 2.38 ERA. He's pitched 11 innings so far. This is a big one right here. Uh, and we'll roll the dice and see what happens. And the Phillies are going to get buried early. Um, at 36 on Art Howe is a single to seven. And we have runners on... First and second, Cruz being on second. Um, single to left field. Let's see whether Cruz wants to come home or not, or try. Remember to add eight. So we got a seven hit, one, and Cruz's modified speed is 12. Uh, the fielder's a four. He got a poor reaction, which, so we'll add two to the speed, which makes it 14. Uh, range is nine. Subtract that from the 14 makes it five on oh, I mean out at the 14 makes it 23 subtract to four makes it 19 so yes we'll definitely try that and again we're two under um, th that would be should have been safe but as it's directly two under we go to the main front um, and we see here if roll 20 is two more or two left it turns a safe call to an out or an out to a safe and the manager argues so we have uh, what should have been safe. Uh, Cruz is out at home and um, fortunately ends the inning. So we will do that and uh, assist seven, put out two. And the Phillies uh, managed to escape the inning despite the fact that it looked like it was going to get out of control. Yeah, it's kind of already out of control. They gave up uh, four runs in that one. But they have quite the offense this season, so anything's possible. And um, Force has been underachieving, so we'll see. Uh, brings up Ramona Velas against uh, Force, and Force is now on a roll. Um, I believe it's uh, three innings score, three scoreless innings. He be becomes grooved. If he becomes grooved, it'll be really hard for the Phillies to touch him. Um, oh, well, you see a late 20 there. Uh, control will not cover it. Avilas walks on a 19 or 20. We have a 20. Control doesn't cover it, so he walks. 
Uh, maybe the Phils can get a little rally here. They got their first ba uh, base runner of the game, and Avilas, he does not steal, and he's very slow. Um, and uh, brings up John Vukovic, who is uh, a rather poor batter and uh, is doing so in this replay at 151. In real life, he was 161, and he's in for Michael Schmidt. And sure wish Mike was in on this game. Um, so, we have a man on base. Uh, Vukovic is a decent hit and runner, but Ramon Avilas does not steal bases, so we will not attempt to hit and run with him regardless of the count. We'll just swing away. And, of course, we'll roll a 12 and 11. Uh, nothing going there. We're probably about 45. Too far away to be a double 20 and a 20. That's far away from ranging out the outfield. So he's going to... Um, actually, we'll go to the ball play chart and verify, I mean, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, and uh, ball hit the center field. Uh, you see the uh, uh, 20. Um, uh, any forced runner advances. That's the RA right there. And um, I didn't call double play depth, so I'm going to disregard the single. And uh, so he'll be out 4-3 with the runner advancing. And it brings up Warren Brewster. Now, Warren Brewster uh, is not a good batter. and Probably never even batted in real life. But uh, he's got to put one up here because uh, just the way the cards fell in this game. And uh, we'll throw the pitch. Chance for a wild pitch, no wild. 11, he strikes out on a plus 20. Yeah, I'm sure he he batted then because you don't get a plus 20 unless you struck out a lot. So, uh, Warren Brewster just playing simple strike sale, which is probably best. Uh, can't, uh, no chance at all for a double play on a line out or anything. Brings up Lonnie Smith with two out. And uh, Lonnie Smith does not come through. He rolls in 19, which is an easy out, 5-3. to three. All right, so we go back to the bottom of the third, and the uh, Astros, the home crowd's liking this one so far. You got Alan Ashby up against Brewster. Brewster's rated for one inning, so he can face two innings, two batters without uh uh, rolling for fatigue. And the first one up against him is Ashby. Oh boy, he's just going to get ugly fast. And uh, he rolls a double to right field. And uh, leads off the inning that away. And uh, the, the hit parade just continues. The Astros, Astros are already up to 10 hits. That brings up Craig Reynolds, who. Uh, Single the last time up. And Brewster's already reeling a little bit and does so again. Oh, I got an inherited runner showing, but still would not make a difference. Uh, gives up another hit, this time to Craig Reynolds, 81 being to right field. Single to nine. Uh, we'll see about advancing the runner, and my guess is no, with, with uh, no extra uh, speed and Ashby's a three and it's uh, in front of the fielder I can't see it even being close so that was a single to right field and Ashby's three and you see the old fielder is not a zero I'll have to redo that one because uh, right fielder is not a zero oh. Sausage fingers hit a key wrong. Advance runner, Greg. Nine hit. One, three. Okay, field is zero again. Ah, yes, duh. I never put it in there. Uh, right fielder is Bake McBride, I believe. Uh, yes. So we will put it five, six, four, and go back and try this again. 
All right, that's a little more like it. Fielder five, range of ten. Uh, Fielder got a great reaction, so that makes uh, minus four. Um, so already we're looking at a minus one. Add ten, nine. You know, he's got a one in four chance of advancing, so we won't even think about it, which is kind of what I thought. So we just go with the single, and he goes to third base and uh, does not even try to go home. Now, we're going to not uh, squeeze bunt, but we will try to sacrifice bunt, and if it's good enough, the runner can advance. Oh, I'm messing up. That Craig Reynolds single should have never been. I never advanced my batter. Craig Reynolds is a uh, plus six against uh, uh, Warren Brewster 70. So that's a 76 minus 175. 64 would not have been a hit. It therefore would have been a fly ball to center field. I'll get rid of that single. It's a little slow today. You gotta get, gotta get on top of it. So we'll just bat away with him then, because there's no sense advancing anybody from second. You're not gonna bat away, bat away, bat away, bat away. 18 does not walk, but a plus three, so it'd have to really be wild for him to walk. Um, so that's probably an out going to the shortstop. Six to three. The one says the runner would advance, and. Um, Porsche's speed is four against the uh, shortstop three, so if he rolls a one or so, he could be safe, but he is not. Out, out uh, six three with the uh, base runner advancing, so that worked out good for the Astros. Two outs, runner on third, Landestoy up. Landestoy tripled and flew out. And, um, oh, he walks. Or against walk, he probably wouldn't have walked, but uh, as uh, Brewster doesn't have the control that uh, walk had, um, he walks. So we have a runner from first and third with a pull up. The pull is uh, tripled and flew out also. And uh, this time he does not. He will fly out to left field, and there's nothing else to check. So it'll be an F7, and, uh, and I forgot the roll for tire. Um, if it's a one or six, one to six, he can pitch regular to this batter. If not, he will be ineffective, and he's he's uh, he maintained his status quo. So he then will not have to check for tired again as a C pitcher. So that out will stand. Remember that as a C pitcher. Um, he can. Uh, carry on for four minus the number of runs allowed plus stamina rating so he's not given up a run yet uh, um, so he could he can continue for a few more innings you don't like to leave a relievers in more than three but uh, we started early in the game so Brewster uh, will stay in that was a fly ball to uh, center field and uh, Brewster will stick around for another inning then. Alright, that brings up Pete Rose. And uh, Forrest is really settled in. And that's three scoreless innings, so he will now be grooved. And that will make it even harder for them to touch him. Let me get a groove tag out for, for him. And uh, let's see what we got for him. Pete Rose. Nobody on base. And you see his numbers are significantly higher now. Um, he is grooved. Uh, normally on the, against the righty, he would be 76. Now he's 83. Normally against the lefty, he'd be 70. Now he's 77. So he can really bear down on the groove. And you'll put Pete Rose out uh, with a 4-3 to three ground ball. 
brings up Bake McBride. Bake McBride flew out last time. He's batting 288 on this season. And uh, um, he'll go down 35, be a ground ball. Also, just second baseman. But we have an error check to do this time, so we'll go E4. Uh, in, in, in field four, no error, four to three out, two ground balls to the second baseman, and uh, brings up Keith Moreland, and uh, this lineup just can't generate anything so far, and Keith Moreland, he will uh, go down meekly with yet another ground ball to the second base, uh, there's a slow roller hit to the second baseman, but Moreland's a two, the second baseman's a three, so um, he would need a negative one. And we're not going to play that game. Out four to three. All right. So, Brewster. We'll come up against Danny Heat. And he uh, heap is singled twice. It's two for two. And um, he will be out uh, four to three. A lot of ground balls to the second baseman right now. Both pitchers. Jose Cruz will come up. Also go out. Uh, and that will be a ground ball to the third baseman. Five to three. Had to range pretty far for that, but there's no check, so it didn't matter. Brings up Cesar Cedeno. He uh, walked and singled, and he will be out this time. Forty-two, which is a ground ball to shortstop. Six to three. And Phillies come up in the fifth, and they have not generated a hit yet, and they've given up five runs and ten hits. He's up Gary Maddox against Ken Force. Ken Force is good for at least seven, and now he's settled into a groove. So, um, let's see what he can do. Maybe somebody can break him here. He'd have to. He'd have to give up five runs now to lose that. And uh, Gary Maddox is not going to get it done. Uh, he will go down. Um, Ground ball to the first base, close enough to be unassisted, out three unassisted. Uh, brings up Manny Trio. Manny Trio, possible walk. Uh, no, he's a 20. Uh, so he'll go out. That's a fly ball to the left field. And that brings up Ramona Villas. Ramona Villas is batting uh, 390. Um, but has not done anything thus far in this one. And uh, does not yet. Uh, he's well overachieving for the season. And goes down on a ground ball to third base. Out 5-3. All right. Brings up the Astros near part of the uh, set, uh, fifth. Art Howe. Um, uh, Brewster usually only pitches about an inning. He will be up next. Vilas is my shortstop. Let's see who I got available on the bench for short. Larry Bella is there. I would not mind putting Bella in uh, at all. But he didn't back anybody up. So in real life, he is probably sitting out for an injury. He did not come in for pinch hit or anything else. So I will not utilize him in that. I try to play these as close to real as possible. Um, who do we have on the field that could play short? John Vukovic. But that would mean uh, Schmidt coming in. And I think Schmidt's a healthy scratch. I mean, not a healthy scratch out for the time being. Yeah, he only played one, one game as a backup, and I already used him as a pinch hitter last game. 
so I will not do it again so yeah we're kind of stuck with let's uh, we'll keep uh, Brewster in one more inning and pinch hit for him the next inning that way we have a better chance of doing a double swap um, he's up against uh, Art Howe who is singled and flown out and uh, let's see how he does this time and he oh boy probably a poor move we have a possible home run the center field here do we roll uh, home run the foul fly ball center field uh, pitchers home run rate right against the righties minus three and uh, as you see uh, the Astrodome can be brutal he held that to a double Brings up Alan Ashby, who had doubled and grounded out to uh, first base. And uh, he will also fool another. Uh, this is just a double attempt, but we'll try to fly ball to home run. Nope, but he does hit the double, and that puts another run across the plate. So it's starting to look like a poor decision to keep him out here now as the lead gets farther and farther away. Um, I'll, I'll continue because I we just this is 1980 and you did not have deep bullpens. You had a few people out there and we're in the fifth yet, so it it would it would be in our best interest to oh give me a break. It would be in our best interest to uh, Oh boy. Enough of that. Computer went crazy. I had the phone plugged in and the USB's not quite right, so get that out so we don't keep getting interrupted. Um we'll try to uh, let's see if you can ride this one out. Damage is already done. Craig Reynolds. Runner on base. Ah, that's it. Definitely get a bullpen, a bullpen going now. Um, that's a hit to uh, left field, close to the runner, so I won't even try to go bring him home. I'll put runners on first and third with four up, and um, uh, we're going to let Brewster hit the showers here. And. on my uh, active roster I'll, I'll not keep him as a healthy uh, as a scratch and we'll bring him in short bat ninth bring a pitcher in at seventh uh, all right new pitcher double switch ninth short stop boa let me get the cards out and boa will come in at there and we will take out Ramona Vilas. Okay. Let's uh, go over and do that on the cards. the shortstop and that will be uh, pitcher bat in seventh pitching status see who we're gonna bring out it is the fifth inning and it'll be Dickie Knowles batting seventh correct yes seventh Vicky Knowles, 1 and 4, the 473 ERA. Hopefully, he does a lot better than what he's been doing so far. He is underachieving. 
So let's go into our air, bring in our pitcher. Dickie Knowles. Put him in the seventh position. And bring him over to the pitcher and warm him up. Ooh, he has a wild forward overpowering stuff. Overpowering stuff's nice, but it's only plus two, so a one or two will be a definite strikeout unless he, they can fight it off. But the wild four, you know, that'll hurt. He could walk batters. So, uh, Ken Force is the first one to go up against uh, Vicky Knowles. Gives him a little bit of a chance. He has inherited runners on first and third. And he could really use a strikeout here. Knowles is a plus nine, so uh, he, there's always a chance. Nope, no strikeout, but it is probably an out. Um, barely over his strikeout range, so we got an out five to three. We do have a slow roller showing, and so before we do anything, we'll have to see if Force can beat the throw to first or not, and they're not going to be able to stop that runner from scoring regardless, because that two will not do it. That has to go home. I mean, it has to go to first. So uh, Force's speed is four against third baseman three, so he needs a one or less to be safe, and he is not. So, uh, be an out 5 3, but runners advance. And, um, grab him around. I should have just sacrificed, bonded him, but I didn't. So, uh, there you have it. Uh, another run in, and, um, brings up Rafael Landestoy. And he will go out on this. No pass ball. Um, 87 is a line out to third base, 18, and we have runners on f second base, so we better check the doubles, I mean the double plays, make sure, uh, line out to third base, 87, uh, 18, you see, uh, if we roll one to four on, uh, D20, uh, he could be doubled off a second, so let's go back and roll. 18 won't cut it, so that's just uh, line out the left, uh, third base, and that brings up Terry Poole. And Terry Poole, he will be. See, the uh, walk did not happen, um, plus four, but uh, the f second ten on uh, that roll was higher than the the, uh, the current wild rating, so it does not add on, so the 17 stands, and Poole needed a 19 to walk. Had that uh, been lower than four, this would have been a walk instead. We have an 11, which is in no strikeout range, and a 16 D20, which is um, which is well past his minus nine. Um, so uh, anything higher than nine here would have been a strikeout. So Terry Poole strikes out. So uh, Dickie Knowles came in and did a relatively good job. I mean, he did allow one inherited runner to uh, score, but that was just on a very um, far ranging out ground out the third base so I'd say all in all that was probably an effective uh, stop for him and that brings up uh, the Phillies in the sixth with John Vukovic facing Ken Forsh and Vukovic is ground out last time up and he will do so again uh, this time flying out the left field That brings up Larry Bowe freshly into the game. And 
Bella, 19. Needed a 20, does not walk, that 10's within his strikeout range, so Bella has a minus 19 though, so the 11's not good enough to get a strikeout, so he fights off the pitch. That'll be a ground ball to the shortstop, 6 to 3. Uh, Lonnie Smith. Lonnie Smith has grounded out twice. And this time he coaxes a walk um, as the control doesn't cover the uh, um, D10. And uh, Lonnie Smith is rated a, a 19 walk. So Lonnie Smith walks and he has a good chance to steal. So let's see what we got here. No steal showing up here, but with the two he can, he can run on just about anything. If I put aggressive base running on, he would attempt to steal, as you see. But uh, you're down... As far as the fills are, seven nothing. You don't want to risk it too much. Uh, well, that'll bring up Pete Rose. Pete Rose is a uh, good hit and run man with Lonnie Smith on there. That's a given. If I get a yellow number up here, you see that minus three. If I get the same for any other, if the same one will have the uh, hit and run take place. Uh, that shows a discount, but he's buried on two, so no hit and run. But Pete Rose does get a single first hit of the game not first base runner and that would be a single to center field um, it's pretty deep and Lonnie Smith has good uh, range uh, single to center field runner on first we are looking at a uh, minus two with the d20 is odd it is not so there is no deduction on Lonnie Smith's speed so let's see if we can advance him a third regardless he's got speed Eight hit one nine out of fielders three got a poor jump so we add two that's eleven add to fourteen range twenty five subtract six is nineteen yes we'll try it and he is safe at third Donnie Smith goes to third when Pete Rose is single so uh, Billy's actually might have a little answer here to get the first uh, hit and their first runner in scoring position and uh, brings up Bake McBride. Bake McBride grounded out and flew out. He's back 287 on the season. And oh, look at this. He will get a hit. And uh, Phil's are starting to see a little something there. That's also a single to center field, but it's close. The hustle, yeah, I'm not going to push it. We're behind, so we're just going to go with straight up single, let the run one or score, and the other stay on second. Force gives up a run. So it is now 7 to 1. And Keith Moreland's up with two out. And that's an out to a hit, 67, which is a fly ball to center field, very far away from uh, the fielder. So we will actually have to check this to see if it's a uh, fly ball. I, I know it's not because Astrodome just swallows fly balls. Uh, but uh, we'll do the dice. Uh, out the hit first, and that is to center field, and that's a fly ball, and that would be a hit of nine or less, and you see we rolled a 20, so he will be out, and we'll also then check fly ball to home run, just because, and there's nothing showing there, which I knew there wouldn't, because uh, the field's rated at 20 in center field, and we rolled a 19, so we have an F out, a fly out. It is deep enough that I might attempt to uh, advance Rose from second. So on that, um, fly ball to center field, runner on second, no modification. You see orange here, means we're to the warning track. So we will add five to the base runner's speed. So yes, we'll definitely uh, at least roll the dice on this one. Um, that's uh, eight out. And then we're base runner speed will be nine. And uh, fielder three got a horrible jump, so we're adding four onto that nine, makes it 13. Add 17 is 30, subtract six, and that's a given. We're going to advance Pete Rose to third base. So it does not count as a sacrifice, but uh, it will advance the runner. And, oh, all that for nothing. 
as you see I'm a little uh, brain dead today but at least you know what would have happened had it been less than less than two outs that's how this game plays um, brain's not as sharp as it should be today All right, that brings up Danny Heap against Dickie Knowles. Now Knowles came in and uh, pitched one inning, and he's rated for one inning, and he's a D. So he would have to roll one uh, one to six to stay in the game at his current uh, rank ratings. And he does so, and I think uh, I think we'll just try to keep him in there. Um, just stretch the innings. So, like I said, this is 1980, and you didn't have the grandiose bullpens that you have now. So, uh, last game played, I can look that up in my pitching chart. So I'm in. I think we had a complete game last time out. No, we used Dan Luna. We used actually Dickie Knowles, Ron Reeds. Yeah. Kevin Soche, so our bullpen is very limited. I have Warren Brewster, uh, an emergency Nino Espinosa uh, as he's resting between starts, and Dan Larson, who pitched one inning. Uh, Dickie Knowles has already pitched one inning yesterday and one today, so yeah, I'll leave him in there. Uh, he'll be tired soon anyway. We'll have to give him a day off. So we'll just try to get our money's worth out of him the day. That only leaves us one or two pitchers left that we would risk putting out there as the others. Our bullpen got hit hard in the last game also. So um, it brings up Danny Heap against Dickie Knowles, and hopefully that wildness won't hurt us again. And right away, we see that uh, he's going to give up a uh, a walk, and that puts Heap on first, and that brings up Jose Cruz, and Jose Cruz, um, yeah, that far up you don't even hit and run, so we're not going to try it, and um, the 16 does not advance because the 6 is over to 4. That will be a probable out 57 fly ball to left field. No damage done. And that brings up Cesar Cedeno. And Cesar Cedeno will check for the pass ball. No pass ball. Um, no walk. 99 will be a foul out 17, but we see that's within the ballpark uh, um, range, which means that uh, it's out of play. So we will have to re roll the dice as the ball flies into the stands. And of course, re rolling the dice, we roll an 84, which is a probable hit for Cedeno. 23 would be a double to right field. We'll check for a fly ball to home run to see if we got a double to home run. No, we do not. And that's a double. Heap on first base, deep ball. Let's uh, uh, double to what I said was right field. Let's go to the uh, right field chart. Double. No modification for a runner on first. Let's try it. All right. Nine. Hit. Double. Okay. Uh, heap is a three. Uh, fielder got a good reaction on it, so we take two off of that's one. Range 13, you know, 12 makes it 13. Subtract four is nine. No, we will not try to score. So we'll just go with the double. And the Astros again are in scoring position, and they have 14 hits on the day, and they're just starting to roll all over the fills. And, um,. Let's see, Art Hell then. No, 
or how has kind of been a thorn in the side today. He's uh, single, doubled, and flown out. And um, let's see what he does. This time, whew, that could have been nasty. Um, 24, ground ball to third base. We have runners on second and third. This is going to be one where I think the runners are going to have to hold. So we need to again go to the ball and play charts. We look up third base, ground ball third base, and uh, 13. And we see that uh, runners on second and third have to stay. So that would just be out five to three. And again, uh, Knowles comes through and holds the line. All runners hold. And that gives two outs with uh, Alan Ashby up. And uh, Phil's are skirting with disaster, but they're holding tight right now. Um, and uh, Ashby is doubled twice and grounded out. And let's see how he fares on this at bat. And oh boy, he's going to make them pay. 68. Uh, single to center field. We have an XE showing, so we do have to check for an error. Outfield 8. No error on the play, but it is a single nonetheless. With two outs, we're definitely going to be checking to see if that runner on second comes in. We're adding 8 to Sedeno's speed. And that will be a. Uh, uh, makes him a 14. Uh, the fielder got a uh, poor jump on it, so we're at 2 to the 14, which makes it 16. Add uh, 10 for the range, which is 26. Subtract 6, which is 20, so almost definitely going to be safe, and is. So we got a single and two more sc score. And, uh, phew, this just got out of hand. And, um,. I did a double. Let's get that out of there. There's a single. But they both score. Alright, so we got a runner on first. Craig Reynolds is up. And the Phillies are just getting bashed in this one. I think it's return favor for the last game we played. Because if I remember right, uh, the Phillies uh, came from behind to win that one late. And uh, Astros are looking for a little revenge. Greg Reynolds, and he should be uh, as, uh, Noel's last uh, batter faced. Fly ball to left field, and he is. No, nothing else to check there. So, another interesting inning, and um, the Phil's uh, come up in the top of the seventh with uh, Maddox Trio and uh, a, probably a pinch hitter for Dickie Knowles. So Gary Maddox will step up to the plate. Force still doesn't have to check for tiring as he's rated for seven innings. Um, and Maddox will get a probable hit. Uh, 45 will go to uh, single to left field. We'll have to roll and we also have to check for an error if it stays a single. Uh, it would be an out if five or less, and he did indeed fly out to the left fielder as we rolled a three. So, out F7. A Manny Trio. Manny Trio, tie goes to the pitcher, is out, 95, pop out up to third base. And that brings up Dickie Knowles, but we will definitely go for a pinch hitter there. And that'll be against the righty, so we'll get out my handy dandy pinching status because I did the same thing with pinch hitters. And let's see who would pinch hit for the Phillies against the righty. That would be Del Unser. and uh, Greg Gross were the uh, go-to pinch hitters for the Phils this year. And I remember them well. And Del Unser. And he will come in and uh, foul out to 10. And that is 
to the third baseman. So that'll be a foul out to the third baseman. Not a very effective at bat, but that's the way most of them have been in this game. X5. And uh, we'll bring in a new pitcher in the vacated seventh position. for Dickie Knowles. It was, I would say, effective, but I would be lying. He just got on through two innings. How about we go with that? So Dickie Knowles will come in and, uh, I mean, he'll go out and uh, in the seventh inning we will bring in Brewster already pitched. Boy, it's going to be rough. Uh, Dan Larson. There we go. We only had Knowles, Larson, and uh, Brewster that pitched in the uh, seventh inning, so it had to be Larson. Or I would have brought in an emergency Nino Espinosa, but I don't want to do that if I don't have to. Nino did not relieve any games, so I'd like to keep it that way. All right, Dan Larson. batting seventh. Okay, he's uh, one and one with a save with a four six one ERA. And uh, let's get him in here. He warms up wild, but wild too is his normal, so that's not really going to be uh, a surprise. He's kind of a wild pitcher. And he will face Ken Force again. Now, this is a moment of truth. This is the bottom of the seventh. Uh, Ken Force, we would know, would be uh, getting to the end of his rope. And uh, so we will roll his uh, fatigue roll now to make sure that uh, we want to keep him in the game. He rolls a two and his fatigue is seven. So he easily stays in grooved and he is a C pitcher. So it's uh, four minus runs uh, plus fatigue is how many innings he can last right now. He could pitch to the tenth if we so desired, but we're not going to do that. And um, so he will stay at the bat regardless. We, I, so I usually do that fatigue because the manager will be able to tell whether he'd be in good shape enough to go in and bat or not. So pitcher against pitcher, Larson comes in and rolls. Oh, you got to be kidding me. And he gives out the, a hit to the pitcher. And that will be a double. His five is within his, uh, of course, his double range. So the woes continue for the Phils. And uh, they're, they're, we're, we're just going to have to take it for the team with Larson also because uh, we're out of pitchers. Uh, Landestoy, two, two long games in a row are just horrible. And oh boy, Landestoy, the one that's under the two, as you see down here, makes the walk rate 20, 21, and so he walks Landestoy and brings up Terry Poole. And, uh, whew, Jesus, <laughs> he walks Poole. So bases are loaded, nobody's out, and uh, there are crickets in the bullpen. We've just got nobody, and uh, Larson really needs to suck it up here. Brings up Danny Heap. That'll be a hit on out. 17, no walk. 76 is a single to right field. 
out of seven or less, new go, single, and uh, not a great runner, so we will just stick with the single, and they're not playing aggressive anyway. They don't want to rub it in too much, but it's now a 10 to 1 game, 17 hits for the uh, the home team, and uh, the, all, all Dallas Green can do is shake his head. Ah, here we go again. Another one. Uh, uh, Jose Cruz comes up and strokes us a hit, and that goes uh, to right field, and uh, we'll roll for an error on this one. And <laughs> single and an error. Right, uh, be bright out there. Uh, fumble with the ball and it's just you can tell it's going to be one of those days when all this stuff happens so 89 and uh, now the game's just blown wide open uh, 12 runs um, 18 hits uh, seventh inning uh, Larson's getting beat up it's just it's getting ugly here uh, let's bring in Cedeno see if we can get an out I may have to bring in uh, Espinosa for a unheard of relief performance yet. Uh, Cedeno. And uh, he walks. So, um, I've given uh, Larson six batters and he has not gotten a single out. And he's given up three runs, and um, as much as I loathe doing this, I will uh, I go look at my bullpen. Wow. All right. Uh, I know for a fact that we used other pitchers. Am I able to override any of them relievers? We've got Brewster, Larson, and Nicky Knowles, Dicky Knowles, or... All right, we well, use Soche for three innings. He's definitely out. I could probably get away with Clear and Reed up to play in this game as he did not pitch for quite a long time prior to that. So... Let's clear him up and bring him in. I don't like overriding like that, but I'll do it. I, two innings pitched, he should rest a game. But this is an unusual circumstance. Yep, Ron Reed is called in. New pitcher, Reed, seventh. Wow. And Reed is five and four, four saves, four three one ERA. Larson hits the showers uh, with uh, throw a tirade from a rather frustrated manager. And um, he's seen throwing a water core around the uh, dugout and everything else on his way through. So let's go to the cards, get Reed out there. Hopefully he can come in and stabilize things a little bit because uh, they just got ugly fast. And Ron Reed will be seventh. Pitcher seven zero needs a good warm up here, and he comes in normal, and he has inherited runners. But uh, Reed is actually this is what he thrives on. You see that uh, he struggled a little bit when he got men on base, but when he came in with inherited runners, he's actually pretty darn good. Um, so that might help fills a little bit and um, that will bring in uh, Art Howe and um, let's see whether we can do this or not okay 19 that's a walk and then comes a run and that brings him Alan Ashby. And he is also rated a 19, so let's see if... Whew. All right, that will be an out-the-hit chance. 
um, 74 fly ball to center field and I'm pretty far away from the fielder so this is no gimme either uh, center fielder six will be a hit of one or less and oh, oh, oh it's just one of them days it is one of them days uh, the out the hit gets past uh, Gary Maddox and uh, fly ball to center field will be four that's just gonna be a single base runner to advance one base and it just got completely ugly here so um, we now have a 14 and uh, one game uh, Craig Reynolds is coming up and uh, there is still no one out in the seventh inning and uh, Ron Reed's gonna have to bear down now somebody's got to put an end to this he does not hit Craig Reynolds so that's probably an out 75 fly ball to center field and thank Lord you got one out and it's not deep enough to bring the runner home and we'll have to put a bat around in for inning seven so Ken Force comes up for the second time in this inning with uh, bases loaded and one out and I'm not big on sacrifice bunts I mean uh, so we're just gonna let him hit away and uh, he will be probably out uh, the 10 is just out of his range but the two is within Ron Reed's range for a strikeout and the 18 is definitely covered by the plus nine from force so force comes in and mildly strikes out which is a bonus because now the Phillies have two out and he can actually get out of this uh, without any further damage if he can somehow manage to get Landis story out and he cannot do that well it's a hit the now chance so we stand somewhat of a chance but it's a range play 65 will be a fly ball no 65 will be a uh, single to center field hit the one out well nobody I'd rather ro have rolled against the Maddox so hit the one out one eight uh, center fielder rated six range of four out of nine or less and he flies out the center field so we won one and we lost one and that was a big big catch by the uh, the all-star center fielder there well he wasn't an all-star this year but Gary Maddox was one of the best I've ever seen out in the uh, in the outfield and uh, Phil's managed to come out of that inning alive but they're down 14 to 1 and uh, that'll bring up John Vukovic still playing third base and we'll leave him in there I mean at this point it's a, it's a laugher you want to get these guys that are at bats and everything and um, he's going to go down uh, he won't strike out and it will be a ground ball to short stop out 6-3 and yes, I do see that slow roller hit the sh uh, first base, second base, third base, shortstop. So we do got to roll. John Vukovic is seven against shortstops, four, so a one to three, and he'll be safe. Four, close play. One over. We go to the main chart. One over is uh, close play if the fielder makes a tag. So we're going to make the fielder's rating plus ten. And if it makes that, he will be out. So uh, fielder in question is the thrower in this case, which is the shortstop. So we need a 4 plus 10, 14 or less for him to be out. 15, Vukovic is safe. So uh, Vuk legs it out for an infield single. And um, he's keeping right around his season average. And that brings up Larry Boa. Now, this is only the third hit for the Phils this game. Larry Bell will come up. And he will uh, probably be out. And 72 is a fly ball to center field. Check for the error. No error. Fly ball center field. All right. That brings up Lonnie Smith. And 
Johnny Smith will come through and come through in a big kind of way here. Yeah, he strokes a triple into center field and plates another Phil's run. And um, I'll keep an eye on Force. I mean, he's grooved and still looks strong out there, but they're starting to get some hits and runs off of him. That's uh, could be concerning. So we'll see how he does against Rose here. Rose will be probably out. That's a line line out the center field, but it is it is a range a hard range play. We'll see what happens. The eight and an L. Second baseman's rated three, so he'll have a hit on nine or less, but it's not a line out to the second baseman. Now we also need to check against third base for a uh, double play. So we will look at the line outs for shortstop second base pitcher, 19. Uh, and uh, you, know, you need a one to get the guy on third base. So let's roll the dice, no go, L5. So Lonnie Smith lines out. I mean, Pete Rose lines out and uh, brings up Bakeman Bride. Two outs, runner on third. And Big McGride comes through. 37 strokes a single to left field. Check for the error. No error. And that'll play another run. So, uh, I mean, no chance of them coming back. But the, uh, I mean, slim chance. I did watch the Pirates game The uh, where uh, the announcer had to walk back from, uh, walk from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia due to his, uh, Saying that there's, I'll walk from back home if they uh, win this one. And the Phils actually came back late and won a game that they were completely buried in. And I, I think that was this team or one of those years in there that that happened. It was, it was some of the members of this team were on that team. I do remember that. I can't remember the exact date or year. Uh, that brings up Moreland. And we're going to keep an eye on Force, but I don't think I'll let him continue after this inning. Nothing's changed on his ratings, but all of a sudden the dice have gone against him. Um, this time he uh, manages to get a ground ball to the shortstop. We'll check the error. No error, out 6-3. And that ends the inning. So, bottom of the eighth. And uh, that's definitely uh, keeping uh, Reed in there. She's rated two. He doesn't have to roll for anything against Turk Pool. And uh, well, let's see how he does. And now it'll be an out, 74, F to 8. And brings up Danny Heap. And that will be a probable out, but we're going to look at strikeouts first. And uh, Reed uh, rolls a 15 on the D20. Heap has a minus 8, so strikeout, no out to hit check. And uh, dice are finally starting to show a little favor towards the fills here. And, oh. Spoke too soon. Jose Cruz comes up and uh, strokes a single into right field. And um, he he could steal on one on a, if that was a four, but he's a one, so it's not going to happen. That brings up Cedeno. Runner on first. And Sedania will probably, nope, he will walk. Boy, they, most of them have 19s. This was one team that knew how to draw a walk. And you see that many 19s on their walk ratings. So there's a 20, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. This is a lethal lineup. That's unheard of.
so we got runners in first and second with uh, Art Howe coming up and two outs and uh, the buddy in the bullpen it's all on read no balk probably out 77 fly ball to center field but we have a 20 showing so we got a roll and we see it stays in the park F8 so moment of truth um, it's the ninth inning Orsh is still grouped uh, maybe now we gotta go back in and look he is a C so let's go back to the uh, the main chart back C grade 4 minus the number of runs allowed he is round 3 so that's 1 plus stamina so 8 so he is only allowed 8 so if I keep him in he will be ineffective manager would see that his arm is dragging and he's gave up a few runs last inning so let's go ahead and get him out of there and let's bring in a third baseman at the same time do a double switch uh, I sincerely doubt the Phils will come back but you just never know so let's see who do we have here for third base Uh, Enos Cabell, he could come in a couple when he didn't start. Pujols can play a little third base, but Cabell, that's easy. And he will play third base at bat ninth. And let's go into here. Let's see who we want to bring in for the ninth. That'd be Joe Sambito. And he will bat. Sixth. Make sure that's what I wanted. Yep. Okay. Sambito on the sixth. And he wild warms up wild. So, um, that brings up, uh, Gary Maddox and uh, he will go down on a uh, fly ball to right field again we gotta check an error and a uh, see if it stays in the park fly ball out and that is to right field no error so fly ball despite all the checks and it brings up Manny Trio and he will get a hit to an out prop possibility 98 that's an infield hit so this starts getting worse so uh, we go hit to an out on the infield and we go here to the infield single and we look at 14 we're looking at the shortstop now when we have to look for a hit to an out we do the shortstop plus 10 to get them out well, we go back shortstops at four so roll of one to 14 and trio will be out and it's 14 now we go here we go again close play 14 is exactly the one so we go to the main chart front we see that there's a collision fielder rating plus five is out so we're now looking at a one to nine and the uh, fielder holds onto the ball and the runner is out but it's not so so he gets an infield single we check for the xc infield six and all that no error is charged so we have an infield single due to the uh, the uh, 
collision and actually that would have been the first baseman that dropped it but it's a none not nonetheless that's basically the way it works uh ron reed you definitely pinch hit because i i don't think they're going to get 11 runs but one runner on base anything can happen um pinch hitter against a lefty so let's get the pinch hitter over here and Philly's pinch hit lefty uh, it'll be Bob Boone coming in to pinch hit down 69 is a fly ball to center field check the air oh an air drops the ball uh, rolls away from the fielder and he goes to second on the air so uh, here you go wheels are falling off a little bit for the uh, the home team now as we got runners on second third and still one out with John Vukovic coming up John Vukovic will. Oh boy, that almost. He will be probably out. That's a fly ball to right field and stay such, and it's close enough to the fielder to where I knew there will not be an advance. So that brings in uh, two outs, and uh, Larry Bell comes to the plate. He is the last hope of the Phils. And. Uh, Larry Boa does not walk. Could have been interesting if that was uh, less than three, but uh, in this case it's just an out. Fly ball to left field. Again, we have a uh, slight chance for a home run, so we have to check that. And it's a fly ball out. So uh, Boa sends one flying deep to left field, but they manage to reel it in and end the game. And. Um, Bills lose this one 14 to 3 and uh, Walk will take the loss. Force will get the win and there is no save. I thank you for joining me. I was hoping for a Phil's win, but uh, hey, that's why we play them. And uh, they stole the last one from the Astros, so the Astros definitely had a little revenge in, in mind. Thank you for joining me. Again, this was. Uh, 1980 with dugout steps and the uh, Phil's drop one to the Astros 14 to 3 in nine innings.